the truth. A light in the darkness. A word of restoration. A revelation of who you are. We search for it. We pursue it. Then one day, you find it. You follow it. Wherever it leads. No matter what people say. And you may be surprised. Just what you may find. And the revelations just may change your life forever. Why? Why do you need to know your identity? After all, there's neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. This of course being said after the Jews were persecuted and enslaved by the descendants of the Greeks. However, that aside, the question still stands, why should one know his or her identity and ancestry? Well, the answer is simple. If you're Israel, then the land of Israel is your land. It's literally yours. The Sea of Galilee is yours. It's literally yours. Paid in full and given to your forefathers. It's your property. The River Jordan and the holiest city in the entire world. Jerusalem. It belongs to the Most High Yah and the children of Israel. This includes all the territory therein and all its resources. To deny one's inheritance is to willingly give up your valuable possessions for free and instead lay claim to tiny pieces of land in the places in which you were scattered and pay rent and mortgage to the rulers of the land in which you were scattered. So, why is it important to know your identity? Well, it's important to know what's yours and what's owed back to you. It's also important to know the prophecies which deal specifically with Israel and the Messiah and being saved from the lands of your captivity. That's why it's important. Maybe you're wondering, are you saying the Jews are black? Well, that's just silly. Everyone knows the Jews are European. <laughs> you black people always trying to claim someone else's history. We know what the Jews look like and you're not it. <laughs> After all, it's what they told us. 
and we believe it. Now, of course, we haven't taken the time to verify uh, or perform any research or ask any questions or, or read any old books. Come to think of it, we just accepted what was told. Oh, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. So, one day you get curious and you want to know for yourself. <laughs> so, you go down to the library and you march right up those steps and you check out an old book on Spain and Portugal, the Jews of Spain and Portugal, to finally determine once and for all who the Jews are. So you open up the old book only to find out, oh, they black. So you take it to your pastor and you say, what's this all about? How come you didn't tell me we Israel? How come you didn't tell me the Jews are black? What other truths have you been hiding from me? What do you mean, what do you mean? If Israel's my homeland, then someone else has my property. That's right. According to the old books, <laughs> Israel is black. Congratulations, you found the truth. The Jews of Spain and Portugal were black. And if they're black, that means they look like you. However, your excitement quickly turns to sadness and anger when you realize you've been lied to. All this time, people from the church and the so-called historians told you the idea of Israel being black was a lie, made up. However, you found books from the 1600s, 1700s, and 1800s describing the Jews as black. As the following reference reads, and it reads, the Spanish Jew is always dark complexion. Tis also a vulgar error that the Jews are all black, for this is only true of the Portuguese Jews. Located at the bottom, lips very full, mouth projecting, chin small, and the whole physiognomy, the way they look, when swarthy or when black, as it often is, has an African look. Thus, the black color is found not only in individuals as the black Jews of Portugal. The Jews of Portugal are very dark. King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas which had been discovered in 1471 and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called. As you can see, Jews were referred to as black, swarthy, dark complexion, and African looking in the old books. So if anyone tells you that black Jews were dreamed up by some guy in Chicago in the 1960s or some black guy in the late 1800s, now you know that that person either hasn't read old books or he or she is intentionally 
lying to you. And keep in mind, the evidence doesn't just consist of old books. Proof includes paintings from the 1500s. It includes stone depictions of Jews before the birth of the Messiah. It includes skulls of ancient Spanish and Portuguese Jews, which match present day Negroes. It includes names of black Portuguese Jews found on the transatlantic slave ship Manifest. And it also includes DNA. A comprehensive list of overwhelming evidence can be found in movies such as Hebrews to Negroes by Brother Ron Dalton Jr. and the upcoming Reclaiming the Thrones movie by Mores to Cole Williams and Josh Cullens. What, what is the root issue for that hatred? towards our black brothers and sisters. The Lord woke me up kind of in the middle of the night and he answered that question. And, and the answer was, because they're my chosen people. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to Jerusalem with great slaughter. Many outrages and atrocities were committed against the remainder of the people. It has been estimated that over one million Hebrews fled into the interiors of Africa from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Hebrew slaves. To reconnect to your history, you need to do three things. One, you need to redefine who the children of Judah are according to the old references. Not from the 1900s to newer, because those books tend to have a totally, completely different history in those books. So you have to ask yourself, how did we lose this in history? How did you lose 400,000 people in history? And the reason why I say how did you lose 400,000 people in history is not in the books. Many people in today's time, many Israelites who don't know their heritage or who they are, are looking back. Now it is up to us to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Hallelujah. Y'all willing, this truth will reach the four corners of the earth. The undeniable truth of hundreds of thousands of black Jews in Spain and Portugal less than 10 years before the start of the transatlantic slave trade in the very countries who started the transatlantic slave trade. You see, in 1492, a great persecution of these black Jews broke out in Portugal by King John II. This history is undisputed. Now, historians, however, often fail to mention the old books which state that these Jews were black. They were literally called black or negro Portuguese, 
which is the Portuguese word for black. Let's see what happens to these Negro Portuguese Jews just before the start of the transatlantic slave trade. The Jews and Moors in Spain, page 214. The king's creed awoke again simultaneously with the reawakening of his greed. He issued an edict which threw even that of Torquemada in the shade. All Jewish children below 14 years of age were torn from their parents' arms, dragged into the church, baptized. Those under three years of age were given to Christians to receive a Christian education, or in other words, to be raised as slaves. Those between three and 10 years of age were put on board of a ship and conveyed to the newly discovered unwholesome island of St. Thomas, called the Isles of Perdition, which was colonized by Portuguese condemned criminals to fare there as best they could. Those between 10 and 14 years of age were sold as slaves. Then indeed the cup of their affliction was full to the brim. It was a stern truth which Lanou uttered. The Jews have experienced fully the unequal skill of the church in administering pain. Mothers cast themselves at the feet of the tyrants and pitifully begged to be taken with their babies. They were heartlessly thrust aside. Hundreds of mothers, mad with despair, ran behind the ships as they carried off the idols of their heart and perished in the waves. The serene fortitude with which the exiled people had borne such many and such grievous calamities gave way at last and was replaced by the wildest paroxysms of despair. Piercing shrieks of anguish filled the land. Childless and brokenhearted, they now sought to leave the land, but they were told that they had forfeited their right, and they were given the choice between baptism and slavery. Thousands after enduring all that they did, after leaving their beloved Spain, and all their wealth and ease submitted to baptism now in the hope of being reunited with their children. Thousands were sold as slaves. Yet, prior to being sold, they were submitted to tortures, cruelties, outrageous, too revolting, too repulsive, too heartrending to be here narrated. Now, just keep in mind that this is less than 10 years before the start of the transatlantic slave trade against the black Jews of Portugal. And it reads, terror seized upon the native Portuguese Jews when they helplessly beheld the cruelties to which their Spanish brethren were subjected. They knew then they themselves could not escape the wrath of the church much longer. And they thought of flight and well had it been for them had they made their escape then. While they were making secret preparations, John II died in 1495. He had been afflicted on the very day when the ships laden with the Jewish exiled children set sail for the Isle of the Condemned Criminals with a strange, painful malady and had lingered ever since. His own promising son and successor preceded him into the grave. His cousin Manuel ascended the throne. He was the counterpart of his predecessor, kind-hearted and a promoter of learning, eager to further the interests of his country by discoveries abroad and by commerce at home. Immediately he disenfranchised the Jewish exile sold into slavery, promised to recall the condemned children and issued an edict in which he commanded kind treatment to the Jews 
and prohibited accusations against them. In their great joy, the native Portuguese Jews sent an embassy to him, offering him large sums of money voluntarily as a token of their gratitude. The king thanked them, reassured them of his goodwill, but refused to be paid for human kindness. But again, had destiny decreed that a woman was to play an ignoble part in the tragic history of the Jews. A marriage was proposed between Manuel of Portugal and the daughter of Ferdinand and Isabel of Spain. Manuel was rejoiced with the proposal. Already he saw himself the near future king of United Spain and Portugal and of the entire new world. But Satan stepped between, dipped his pen in gall, writing the marriage contract, demanded as one of the conditions the immediate expulsion from Portugal of all the Jews, both natives and exiles. The king hesitated. The fanatical daughter of fanatical parents persisted. Argument made her more vehement. Torquemada might well be proud of his pupil. The possession of vast empires and of the most powerful crown of Europe tempted and the tempter conquered. He had purchased his right to the princess of Spain at a sacrifice of thousands and thousands of lives with the destruction of the very pillars of his nation's prosperity. On the 30th of November, 1497, the marriage contract was signed. And on the 20th of the following month, appeared the edict of expulsion of the Jews from Portugal. The scenes of mourning and wailing and heart-rending cries, which resounded in Spain, re-echoed in Portugal. Only the more painful, because of the terrible knowledge they had since acquired the meaning of the word expulsion. Manuel soon regretted his signing away his most industrious, most intelligent, and most prosperous citizens, but the marriage contract held him fast, and the Spanish queen kept a watchful eye on him and Torquemada upon both. The prospective vast empire and the Spanish crown still dazzled his eye. He planned a strategy. He thought he could force the parents to embrace Christianity and to remain if he once succeeded in getting all their children into his power and into the Christian faith. He gave secret orders for the repetition of the atrocious crime of having all children under 14 years of age seized from their mother's bosom and father's arm dispersed through the kingdom to be baptized and brought up as Christians. The secret became known. Portugal again re-echoed the wails of stricken ones. Fanatic mothers threw their children into deep wells or rivers. Mothers were known to take their babies from their breasts and tear them limb from limb rather than to resign them to Christians. They would rather know the bodies of their children in the graves in their released spirit in heaven, then have them adopt a faith into which Satan sent his friends for their schooling. With all the parents' opposition, the king's order was executed. Many accepted baptism, but not enough to please the king and to wreak vengeance upon them for thwarting his wishes. He revoked his edict and seized all who had not yet fled and sold them as slaves. These black Spanish and Portuguese Jews were placed on the west coast of Africa in great numbers because they refused to embrace the Roman religion. You can find this information in old books such as the one that was written by John Ogilby in the 1600s who was the official cosmographer and geographic printer. 
In John Ogilvy's book, which today retails for around $50,000, on page 574, you can find the truth. And it reads, King John III, King of Portugal, sent a colony there above 200 years before, whom though the unwholesome air destroyed, yet the place was not left desolate. For he sent new inhabitants who first settled Guinea, next in Angola, and lastly on the island of St. Thomas, that so they might be better used to the air, that the said king sold all those Jews for slaves that refused to embrace the Roman religion and caused their children to be baptized from whom coming there in great numbers most of the present inhabitants were descended. The black Jews were sent to the west coast of Africa in great numbers, less than 10 years before the start of the transatlantic slave trade. To learn more about the fate of these black Jews, be sure to check out Hidden Hebrews 2 for more shocking truths and evidence. And also check out the upcoming movie Reclaiming the Throne due out in April of 2020. Now, before ending this video, I'd like to leave you with a scripture from the Messiah, Yahshua Hamashiach. If you ever wondered, what's the most important thing? What's the most important instruction or commandment? Well, let's take a look at the most important thing according to the Messiah himself. Mark chapter 12, verse 28 reads, and one of the scribes, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Yahshua answered him, The first of all commandments is here, O Yisrael. Elohim thy Yahuwah is one. And thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment and the second is like namely this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself there is none other commandment greater than these and the scribe said unto him well master thou hast said the truth for there is one elohim and there was none other but him and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices and when yahshua heard that he had answered discreetly he said unto him thou art not far from the kingdom of elohim and no man after that durst ask him any questions Israel, thank you for watching. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for your support and prayers. And if you'd like to support via Patreon, visit our Patreon site in the description box below and become a $1 Patreon supporter. Well, stay blessed, my family, and Shalom.